In this episode of Running the Length of Africa, we gear up for the Namibian border. There we have it, boys. But unforeseen problems. And they can't give it to us. Lead to the roguest decision of the trip. Maybe I'm not wise. And everything goes wrong. Ah! Brother. How are you feeling? Yeah, all right. The old ankle, she's just playing up a little bit right now. But we're gonna massage, get her fixed up, ready for another day of stomping. Basically, we're hearing rumors that the Namibian border wouldn't let us through with our windscreen smashed. So we're gonna have to get it fixed. It is what it is. What's the goal for today? Just run 50K, don't get mugged. That'd be ideal. Let's talk about your uh, sudden baby oil addiction. I love baby oil, man. <laughs> Not a sponsor either, but you know, mate, if they wanted to. <laughs> your contact, what yeah. her, what's her name? Khada. Khada. Yeah. Khada. Good job. Yeah. She very kindly sorted us out a new windscreen, which was extremely generous of her. She sorted us out a treat there because that's like quite a big expense that we really can't afford to pay. It's that kindness of, of people that is going to ultimately get us through this mission. Yeah, big up. Uh, Kada. 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 You're getting closer. Kada. 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 Gerda. Gerda. It's like Gerda, but with a k in the front. Okay, Gerda. Kada. I started day 15 off with a bang, plowing 25 kilometers through the mountains and into the desert. Unfortunately, in my rush to get on the ones and twos, we'd forgotten to set up a meeting point for the first stop. Where art thou, Russell? Russell! Well, we haven't seen him lying dead on the side of the road, so that's a good sign. Well, what are we doing, Harry? We are on a, not an Easter egg hunt, but a Russell Cook hunt. No, uh, it's not as fun as less chocolate. There's less chocolate involved. Poor bugger got a, a bit of a banged up ankle. Um, and despite our best efforts to give him some kind of medical advice, wouldn't listen to him. So, if you see him limping today, guys, ladies and gents, you know why? Just know, because in he, his own f***ing fault. He's belligerent. Rossi! Russell! Come and get your sandwiches! He's either on this stretch or he's dead. I literally don't see him. <laughs> is that a person? Yeah, it is. That's him. Hello there. You're limping quite a bit. Yeah, I'm all right once I get running. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually, if it was if it was at least 25% better than it did yesterday. Uh, That's good. Uh, j I'll tell you how much more it'll be. Wow. You could do you so much, you could do anything. I'll tell you how much better it'll feel if you actually put the fucking aid on. What's the point in having a medical advisor if you don't fucking listen, you dead? Yeah, it's not B-roll, mate. That's A-roll right there. <laughs> Hardest geezer. In a previous life, he was a salsa dancer. The next town, yeah. we've been reliably informed. Well, you can tell me. No, the town, apparently, it's a bit dodgy. So the guy we stayed with last night, he was like, you should absolutely escort us through this town because you will get robbed. Yeah. What have you got with you? Uh, left hook. Danger, left hook. <laughs> Danger. I've got pepper spray, and I've also got the old dummy phone. <laughs> says, hello. So it friendly. It looks really legit. If someone wants a mobile, they've got one. All they have to do is just ask me for it, really. It's a giveaway video, really. It, it's it? actually a giveaway <laughs> video, yeah. Just mug Russ for a chance to win. <laughs> Mr. Beast over here will be running the town. Yeah. <laughs> I continued another 14 kilometers to the town of Steinkopf, which our good friend Yanni assured us was the sketchiest yet. So, What's this the plan? is supposedly one of the sketchiest towns we've been through so far. So, we're just gonna play it by ear for the next few kilometers. So we're gonna run alongside you. What do you reckon, Jared? Done for. <laughs> He's done for. <laughs> I do know it got serious though, because he handed off his cookies to me, and yeah. if this man hands off his cookies, <laughs> serious <laughs> going down. Godspeed, and we'll see you on the other side of the town. I'm security. Let's fucking go. Gonna cruise by. Yeah, just waiting for him to get past these blokes. Yeah, but they're, the, they're the dodgiest looking guys yeah, out there. There he goes. There he goes again. <laughs> Cheers. Cool. Not too bad. Nah, mate. Right, see, I'll, um, cool. I'll probably just carry on to the end now. 
cookies back in hand, I continued on, while the boy secured a guest house also gifted to us by the wonderful woman that is God. As I ran my last 16 kilometers, the rocky scrubland of the last few days opened up into a vast desert pan. This really put the scale of the mission into perspective. My feet absolutely stink. Yeah? Give me a whiff. I don't, We're we've on done the this before. Camera thing again. <laughs> How was that? Oh, mate. Really perked up this afternoon. Yeah, mate, the ankle's getting better. I can feel it. I reckon yeah. it'll be alright tomorrow. Fucking sick. We just love that recovery. It's that cutting edge scientific technology that we've got on board that's just really making a difference here, isn't it? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Cookies and just fucking dealing with it. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's take you for your first actual bed in three oh, weeks. Mate, love it. Let me take you to your room. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Smells <laughs> lovely. Oh, we're from the UK, so... Yeah, this is warm for us. Yeah, this yeah. Is oh, way colder than this, normally. Bye, <laughs> right, boys. How's it doing? Thank you, it feels better already. Oh, amazing. <laughs> you happy? <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts? It's too good for me. Have you got, like, a, a little dog house or something that you can shut <laughs> instead? <laughs> Thank you so much. And if this wasn't luxury enough, the host had chefed up a hot home cooked meal for us too. <laughs> oh, man. You happy? Rotten. Am I happy, lad? <laughs> like all my Christmases have just condensed into one. And here we are. We've even got a side salad, mate. Don't know what this is. We've just had a fantastic meal. We've just had a fing banging hot meal. I think we're all on like. As I said in the video, cloud 11. <laughs> you can't quote yeah. your own video for another video. Also, quoted it wrong because in the video it says cloud 10. This is true. Cloud See how can't, it... You can't quote yourself. You can't also <laughs> misquote mis yourself. yourself. <laughs> Honestly, I've not seen Russ as happy as he has been today yeah. in a long time. Bearing in mind he's, cool. he's had a, a messed up angle for the last couple of days. He's sitting him down, getting him bed and a room on his own. He can really get a good eight hours. And I'm so happy we could give him this. Yeah. I feel like a proud mom. Oh. <laughs> After the best sleep of my life and a hot breakfast, we headed back out into the heat for my last day of running in South Africa. How are you feeling this morning, man? Yeah, all right. Mate, I had the best night's sleep of the mission last night. About like nine hours, ten hours. Woo! Been fed. Is it enough to take you to the border? Oh, I reckon so. Yo, yo, oh, this geezer checking in. Day 16. Any more? <laughs> no, got nothing more for you lads, unfortunately. Looking like a pretty exhilarating route today. There's nothing really more to do other than go and smash tarmac all day, really, isn't it? Last day of South Africa, mate. Good luck. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's how normal people interact, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I love South Africa, it's been blessed, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been amazing. And you got nearly yeah. twice. Yeah, only twice out of 16 days. That's f***ing not a bad ratio, that. <laughs> I was so eager to get on that tarmac, I completely forgot about my arch nemesis, the sun. Is it Project Africa or is it babysitting? Anyone would think that we were in the middle of a f***ing desert right now. Here is a ginger man in the desert with no hat. Silly Russ. Oi, today is going to be a good day, I'm feeling it. We love I'm it. feeling strong. And a good day it was. I blitzed through the first 33 kilometers like it was nothing along the straight roads of the desert. Feeling outrageously good. I'm probably feeling better than any other day here. Really? Better than day one? Better, uh, maybe even better than day one. Not even hitting ones and twos, I'm just floating. Just floating. Just actually floating. gliding. How about you boys? How's your morning been? I watched this nice little bar load. Yeah. And then I drag and drop some more files oh, and I watch it load sick. some more, mate. Yes. Yeah. So I've, what I've been doing, yeah, is like I get on a road, yeah, it's really straight. And then like I look at something in the distance and then I just like slowly gets bigger over like the course of like an hour. Really? And then and then I am here. Like twenty thousand people subscribe to this channel. Yeah. So how the f are we gonna make a YouTube <laughs> series out of that? I love what a beautiful place they're in. Mate, do you know what's the best part about this, yeah? Is this this road that I'm running down is just slightly downhill. There is absolutely nothing going on here though, is there? But I look at these fences and I'm like who put these fences up then? Probably the farmers. They're definitely farming like tumbleweeds. But you know, for all those Texas movies, oh, yeah. this is where it comes from. Billions of dollars worth of crops. Do you think they'll spare some for this joke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Where are we, Stan? We are in South Africa, but ladies and gentlemen, that in the distance is Namibia. We're nearly at one country down 15 to go. I am 49 kilometers deep on the last day in South Africa, and I just thought I would reflect on what has been an absolutely unbelievable start to the mission. You know, we've gone through the motions a few times, but running here in between these mountains now, just thinking like how incredible this opportunity to experience this continent is. We've met some great people along the way that have really helped us out. You know, for that, we'll always be grateful. It's exciting times to finally be about to cross the first border of the mission. I've ran faster today than I have on any other day, including day one, which says a lot, you know, like you suffer, 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 and then on the other side, eventually, is growth. I just wanted to take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this country is, how beautiful the people have been to us, and look forward to another 15 more countries and another seven and a half months on the road. And you know what that is, boys. Go on, that's the border. How do you feel? You having a good time? It's bittersweet. I'm so happy we're here. I'm really sad I'm not going into Namibia with you guys. But I'll be back for Angola, which is cool. At least I get to sit at the border. <laughs> and look at it. I can say I've seen Namibia. A rapid 18 kilometers took me all the way to the border in the fastest run of the mission so far. There we have it, boys. First country done. This was a huge moment for the mission. One country down, 15 to go. I was on cloud 12. But like always, this couldn't last forever. Have you heard the, the windscreen? Ah, uh, I did hear it. Yeah. They, they haven't sent it yet. They didn't go and collect it yet. It wasn't even like a courier is late. They just didn't go and get it yesterday. And they're like, is it okay if we can do it tomorrow? Today we were due to cross the border, but we couldn't do that without the windscreen being fixed. A missing part made this increasingly unlikely and we needed to formulate a plan fast. Rest day, no rest day. A tricky one, but if you brought enough food with you and enough water with you, you could do it and we could catch up with you once the, once the windscreen's done. It, it basically all just depends on whether this window place get back to us and say they can do it this evening. Because if so, then we're sweet. Oh, I'm gonna go for a poo. And have a think about it. It's, tr it's definitely not a wise idea to go across the border two days before the van gets. On me. his own. But also, Maybe I'm not wise. I get the cowboyness, but I don't think you should be a cowboy in the circumstance. <laughs> now is when we get to find out how much do I really mean it when I say no rest days. Purity of the mission. Like, then I should go and just f***ing try not to die in the next two days. I can't carry that much water, that's the main problem. And you're running into a desert. Yeah. And we spoke to the guy last night, and he says, just cross the border here, you can hit 35 to 40 in the day. Basically, I can shake your hand and say, cool, I won't see you again, but I'll see the boys in June. <laughs> it's unrealistic to, to run today because I've got a, I'm running straight into the desert and there's a, there's no infrastructure there. If I take two liters of water, it will run out within two hours and I'm f***ed and I've got to wait another 24 to 48 hours. In which time you're dead. And which time I will die, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I can do, is instead of running and sweating my nut off, I can walk, which will mean I'll need way less water. I can spread it out a bit more, still get kilometers in, still not have a rest day, but still move forward. It doesn't come without risk. It's one of those times in the mission where you've got to make a decision and there isn't really a right choice, but you still got to make the cho choice, you know. That's life. I'm thinking this is the plan of attack. We try and get the windscreen fixed now. If they can't fix it, fine. We'll drive Jared to the airport, come back, drop me off at the border, and I'll march on into the night. What happened the last time you were running that night, sorry? Yeah, I know. Surprise, surprise, they couldn't fix the windscreen. They basically just said, we really <laughs> didn't know that the transport doesn't go on Saturdays, even though this is what they do all day, every day, and have done probably for like 10 years. But basically, they promised us it today, and they can't give it to us. So we're gonna have to get the windscreen replaced tomorrow, which means that tonight, in order to keep up with the, the no rest days promise, Ross is gonna cross the border alone. Mate, f it. The game's the game. Yeah, the game yeah. is the game. So with the most road plan of the mission so far in place, we drove four hours to Uppington to drop Jared off at the airport. 
Jared was sad to go, but booking him onto the project last minute meant he had no choice. He'll be back on the channel in no time. Bye, Jared. Ta ta. You guys see you in a month. I'll let you know when I'm home and let me know. I'll let you know if we get a person to replace me for. I'll let you know when we find Russ. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best thing. So we're in Uppington. We just dropped Jared off. Yeah. Now we're trying to get all of our paperwork in order for Russ's road crossing tonight. A mad dash around the city allowed us to secure the last minute paperwork we'd need to pull this thing off and some cupcakes. How's that? How's that cupcake, mate? Have you got to the caramel bit yet? Mmm. Simple pleasures in life, I eh, think boys? this might be the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. I thought the chocolate bit was going to be the hidden centre, but they were right, it was hidden. There's another centre within oh, the right. chocolate centre. So, basically, we've been running around trying to sort things out so that we can get across the border. Um, we dropped out at the airport. Um, we've just got a letter signed for, on my behalf. That means that the boys can drive my vehicle across the border without me. Well, it basically means that we can, I can not do a rest day. I mean, it means that we get across the border smoothly tomorrow and you don't mm. die in the middle of the desert. Basically. Oh yeah, there is that as well. Yeah. <laughs> so. While I tried to get some sleep before the night shift, Stan drove the long five hours back to the border. So we stopped about 20 minutes drive from the border so, so as not to draw too much attention while she's rough his ass. Yeah, this is rogue. It's pretty rogue. <laughs> this is Are you having any second thoughts? Nah. Just know, like, you know when you're about to embark on something, you're like, yeah, this is definitely one of my rogue decisions in life. Yeah. <laughs> it's, definitely, it's definitely where I'm at right now. Game's the game. The game is the game. So what's going to get you through your 24-hour solo period in the desert, Ruff? I've got a tray of sausage rolls <laughs> and um, a tub of sweets and a big bar of dairy milk. Cool. And some baby wipes in case I <laughs> myself. Imagine if this is the last video before I snuff it. We were packing for this like I packed for holiday, like I just grab random shit, shove it in a bag and hope for the best. Russ has got a satellite phone, um, which he can use to contact us from anywhere. Turns out we're not complete idiots. No, we are We are complete idiots with modern technology in our hands. Pepper spray. That'll do it. That'll, that'll take... <laughs> I feel threatened. Sweet. Let's roll. Good luck. See you in 24 hours. It's all a bit wild. It's probably yeah. the wildest moment of the trip so far. And we've had an attempted hijacking and an attempted mugging. So we are really out here in a place that is incredibly remote. And we've been driving for hours and hours and hours today through the desert and just seeing the vastness of the landscape and thinking that he's gonna go and tackle that on his ones. It's gonna take us potentially 20 plus hours yeah. to meet up with him tomorrow. A little bit worried, but if anyone could do it, it's him. Big moment for the trip, really. We're just all praying that it goes smoothly. Right, I've just made it through the first checkpoint, but filming here is probably going to be sketchy, so I'm probably not going to really do it. But you know where I'm going. Doesn't seem like there's really barely anyone here. I think they just let me in. Oh, there's a guy. Is there a guy here? Right, so, South African side done. They've sent me through to the Namibian side, I believe. Right now I'm kind of walking in no man's land. But basically, I think I just walk down this road until I see some Namibians and then they decide whether they're going to let me in or not. Feels pretty mad to be crossing the first border of the mission, especially because I'm doing it in the middle of the night and I'm by myself. Mad. The size of this continent, man, is so big straight into that desert. I've checked it out on the map, there seems to be absolutely niche. Right, we've done it. Look, that's the stamp in the passport. They let me through. Now oh, I'm just gonna walk through the rest of these buildings and uh, head off into that glorious night. Got a long night shift coming up. The graveyard shift. I'd made it to Namibia, but back in South Africa, things were already going wrong. I was just driving and didn't even touch the gearbox. All of a sudden, 
it just starts breaking. Came to a standstill, couldn't start the engine for a second. I've got it started again now. I actually don't know what the f that was. This would not be a great place to break down. It wouldn't be the best. Uh, there are better places than in the middle of the fucking desert. Also, we just gave our sat phone away. And Russ needs it more than we do. We Well, yeah, but not if we can't get to him. Well, yeah, because if we can't get to him, then he dies. <sighs> Fuck. Lighting is terrible. We can't see a thing, but made it out of the first town, that little village, and now I am just heading into the desert. Ahead of me, I can see the sand, and that is literally it. I turned my head to watch off whilst walking through that town because apparently it's a bit sketchy. There was three lads on the road, right? <coughs> As I was walking through, mate, they're standing in the middle of the road. I was like, here we go, boys. But um, hey, as I started walking up to them, they all just walked away. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the f <laughs> right. Right. There we go. Not only to be scared of the crazy man lurking in the darkness, when you are the crazy man lurking in the darkness. Night shift coming in hot. So why is Nelly having a fit? It's done. Run out of petrol. Where are we, Stan? We're in the middle of the fucking desert, Harry. And how far are we from society? 45 kilometers. That's a long walk, mate. It's a fucking long walk, man. What time is it? It's midnight. Where is Russell? He's in the bib, yeah. <laughs> and what happens if we don't reach him tomorrow? He dies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, walking is physically not an option, it's 12 hours walk. I don't think it's completely unfeasible that we just see if anyone passes by. Oh, mate, there's no one for miles around. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> there we have it, boys. That's what we're dealing with. Big old snakey boy. Is that a snake? No. Thought it was a snake. It's actually a rope. How disappointing. <laughs> it was a big old rolled up snake. I've been on the road for about four hours now. And uh, I'm absolutely shattered, I can't lie. I'm gonna keep on storming through. Well, there's not even anywhere to stop even if I wanted to anyway. So, <laughs> I'm a bit, a bit done for really. I've literally just got to keep playing on. There is not much to update you on because it's pitch black, can't really see anything, apart from tarmac and sand. You know, I'm still alive, so that's good. Oh, this is gonna be long. This is gonna be a brutal, like 24 hours, man, probably longer. Oh. We're in the middle of the desert. Do you, do you reckon if you scream loud enough, someone will come over the hill and help us? So I famously got some pipes on me, and uh, it's only 50 Ks, so I reckon we'll give it a go. What have I got myself into? See if anyone hears us. Help! The game is the game. Help! The game is the game. Help! Will Stan and Harry escape the desert? Will they make it to me in time before I die? And what happens when I run out of water in the desert? Find out in the next episode of Project Africa.